Welcome everyone to our DIY workshops all about luxury vinyl plank flooring. We'll get to some of that information in just a few moments. First off, um, my name is Joe Cobb. I'm here with the wonderful Robin Reval. And Robin's going to help us today doing some demonstration and some information about this. So let's get to it. Yeah, let's get started. There is a lot of stuff that we're going to cover in this workshop. First off, we're going to talk a little bit about what is luxury vinyl plank or luxury vinyl tile commonly referred to as LVP or LVT. What is it? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about surfaces, what you can install on, what you can't install on. How do you prepare that surface? Then Robin's literally going to take us to a demonstration of one type of installation that we think you will really enjoy. We'll show you a little bit of uh, problem solving, cutting and everything, and we'll answer questions along the way. So there's a lot of stuff. All right, so Robin, my first question to you is luxury vinyl plank, luxury vinyl tile, what is it and why do I need to have it? Oh my gosh, it is such a great flooring option for that active lifestyle. We all love to live in our homes, right? Mm -hmm. So luxury vinyl plank or luxury vinyl tile is exactly that. It can give you any look you want. Plank usually comes in a type of wood grain. You can see we have tons and tons of different colors, options, styles, looks, different grains. Uh, luxury vinyl tile does just that. It gives you the look of tile, maybe a marble or a, a granite or something like that. But the beautiful thing is it's a lot less expensive mm. than the original. Yes. <laughs> and it is a lot easier to install. It's a lot easier to work with, but still gives you that great, durable look that'll fit in with any decor out there. Let's talk about durable because Robin and I, we, 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 we like some animals, don't we? Yes, we yeah, do. <laughs> I, I, ha I have seven dogs. <laughs> I have two, but one is young and is like having five. And I got to tell you, <laughs> putting this in my house is one of the greatest things we ever did. We got rid of that really stinky carpet because they have you know, accidents all the time, yeah. young kids. So yeah, it is, it is a great way to actually spruce up your house, right? right. Make, it, make, it, make it feel a lot better. Now, I've heard a lot of different installation types. Tell me about the installation we're gonna do today. What is this type of installation? What we're really gonna focus on today, which is my favorite, is what they call a click lock. Okay. And think of it like a giant jigsaw puzzle. You'll take a piece, this is a piece of uh, vinyl plank flooring, and you'll see it has a groove side that kind of sticks out, and it has a tongue side. And all you need to do is take the tongue Stick it into the groove and lock it into place. That's it. That's all you have to do to put these together. And this forms what we call a floating floor. Okay. Now, what that means is it's not actually attached underneath. They're only attached to each other, which is great uh, because it's almost like a, a giant carpet over your entire floor, right? It just covers your floor. So a couple of things. So you mentioned tongue and groove. Now mm -hmm. I've heard of hardwood floors having tongue and groove. Is that a very similar concept? It is a very similar concept, okay. except when you're talking about hardwood floors and you have a tongue and groove like that, a lot of times they need to be nailed together mm. and nailed down to your subfloor. In this, that's not at all the case. These just connect to each other and sit right on top of your floor. There's no other adhesives or nailing or any other way to attach this. So, so we get this question a lot. I already mm -hmm. see a couple coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, if it floats on my floor, what keeps it in place? Well, when it shift around? Great point. First thing that keeps it in place is, although individually these may not be incredibly heavy, when you put an entire floor of them together, it's a heavy floor. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. And anybody that has moved cases of vinyl <laughs> floors <laughs> upstairs, <laughs> It can get heavy. So the weight of itself keeps it down. Not only that, you're going pretty much wall to wall. Mm. And we'll talk about that a little more in installation. You gotta leave a little bit of a gap, but you're pretty much going wall to wall, so there's no place for it to go. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're absolutely right. I thought to myself, how is this gonna stay in place? And I can carry one case upstairs. I'm like, okay, I see how it's gonna stay in place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've heard this is, so this is floating, mm -hmm. interlocking. Now there are a few other different types of installation methods. There's something called a grip strip method. Mm -hmm. Now, when vinyl first came out, this was a really popular method, this grip strip. Okay. And all this does is it has an adhesive where the click lock has a tongue and a groove on two sides. The 
grip strip has an adhesive strip on two right. sides. And what that does, it allows the pieces to stick to each other. So again, no adhesive onto the floor, just those two adhesive strips attached to each other and connects the pieces. Now, this is great. Um, it's a little less forgiving. I was going to say, because it sounds to me, if I make a mistake okay. with the interlocking, mm -hmm. I can just, like you did, unlock it yep. and change out a piece or something. That's it, right? But, it, but if I'm out. sticking something together with a grip strip, it seems like it's not as forgiving as you said. Right. You have to be a little more precise in your lineup because once those pieces stick together, you have a little bit of wiggle room, mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe about a minute until they really sit solid and it's difficult to kind of readjust them if you need to. But again, the advantage of this is the planks are stuck to each other. They're not actually to the floor. So if at any time you have to remove all of the uh, vinyl, you don't have to worry about damaging the floor. So mm -hmm. that leads me to our last type of installation, the traditional glue down. Mm -hmm. Now the glue down definitely is gonna stick to the floor. Sure. You don't have to worry about that, but you have an adhesive, a lot more difficult to work with going to again be less forgiving because mm -hmm. it's going to you know once you stick it it's stuck uh you have a little bit of wiggle room with it while it starts to dry but once it starts to dry that's down there uh, so it's smelly that yeah. glues those glues definitely have an odor to them um and it's a little more difficult to work with and it's a little more permanent installation you're not yeah. going to be able just to pick this up and replace it so if you're thinking about so maybe remodeling again in the future or selling the house and you want something more neutral, this is going to be a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. It's, I've seen a couple of bad installations where, you know, the line was just slightly off and, and mm -hmm. it's and it's there, right? You know, the, and right. this is, if you're a beginner DIY, love the click lock, the interlocking boards, floating floors, very easy to install. Yeah, yeah. we're going to show you just how easy it is in a couple of minutes. And I, I think it's definitely the most specific and easiest now we've already said this is great flooring, very durable and everything. What's in it? It doesn't look like there's much at all. It looks like a little thin piece of plastic. It does, but it is a highly engineered, highly piece of, engineered okay. <laughs> piece of plastic. So there's a couple of different layers to it. First, and we're going to work from the top down. So your scratch coat. Okay. This is what's going to keep those dog nails. Sure. Uh, you know, if you uh, have your shoes inside, anything like that, that's going to keep this from scratching. Now, this is not gouge proof. You right. can actually, it is soft enough to gouge if you have like a nail in the bottom of a chair mm -hmm. and you slide it or a heavy piece of furniture catches on it. But your everyday scratches, that's going to protect against it. Underneath that, you have what you call the decorative layer. This is what allows us to have so many different styles and grains and colors, even the tile, okay? Because they can put pretty much any pattern underneath there and they protect it. Then you have your vinyl layer, which is the core. Now, vinyl is a plastic product, which makes it great for water resistance and waterproofing. A lot of times people look at this like laminate floor, the old wood laminate floor, right, yes. which is still a great floor. Yes. But the big difference is the core on a laminate floor mm -hmm. is a wood-based product. It is basically kind of like a press board put together mm -hmm. with wood and glue. If moisture gets in there, it's going to swell and you're going to see it. Um, so if you get too much moisture in there, that's why they say that, that um, you know, vine, uh, the laminate floor is not good for places like bathrooms and things like that mm -hmm. because there's too much moisture. This, you don't have to worry about it. You're not going to get that. It is a vinyl product all the way through, which is super durable, super durable waterproof and water resistant. And a lot of them, I love, have an attached underlayment. Oh, we get this question all the time. <laughs> Do I need underlayment when I install this? Right. Now that is a big question because a lot of people are going to insist that you do. My, our answer, <laughs> it, it depends. depends. First thing you want to do, you want to read the manufacturer's instructions. It's so important because I know the floor that you installed, yes. it had an attached underlayment and it clearly stated, if you put another underlayment on, it's gonna void the warranty. Void the warranty, absolutely. Exactly. Yep. And then there's other ones that say, yes, you do wanna add an underlayment. Always read your manufacturer instructions. 
going to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. All right. But a lot of the luxury vinyl plank already has a sound dampening underlayment attached to it. So you don't need any additional underlayment. Yeah, see, and we get a lot of questions about this. Well, won't this, you know, maybe I'm switching out carpet, putting this down. Mm -hmm. Won't things echo and it's loud? Folks, I can tell you, I, I did the same thing. I, I can't hear the upstairs now I, with the dogs are running around on it. You know, it's right because, you know, because it is that vinyl, it's that plastic, it's, it's got a little bit of cushion to it. Yeah. It has some sound um, properties already in it already. by the fact that it's vinyl. And then again, with that added yep. attached underlayment, really, you don't. So, so don't be surprised by the thickness of this. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, it's really thin. I'm going to see how it's going to stay in place. I'm going to see how it's going to, you know, wear. And it's actually, it's, it's, it's like being the tiles on the space shuttle, right? I mean, it's, 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 it's highly, highly engineered, engineered plastic. <laughs> okay. so, exactly. So you you talk, you, you mentioned this briefly. Where can I put this in my house then? That is the beautiful thing about luxury vinyl plank and luxury vinyl tile. You can put it anywhere. Okay, anywhere in your house. You got a basement, because a lot of times, again, that laminate floor, they say you can't go below grade, which means it's not good for basements. Not a problem with this. You could do basements, you can do laundry rooms, kitchens, family rooms, dining rooms, bathrooms, laundry rooms, you name it, you can add luxury vinyl plank anywhere inside your house. Yeah, we literally went from a laundry room down a hallway into the master bedroom. So there's three different types of rooms there, three different types, types of traffic there, and it's absolutely phenomenal. All right, so um, what about if what about a screened-in porch or a patio or something like that? Could I install it there? Yeah, that's the one thing. You can install it any room that is climate-controlled. So if you have like a screen porch outside and you are subject to the variations mm -hmm. of temperature throughout the year, not such a great spot for it. Um, but a lot of times people like will convert their garage space mm -hmm. where they actually climate control, maybe turn it into a workout room or they sure. use it as a workshop and they're out there and have it climate controlled. You can absolutely do that. It's a great durable flooring for something like that because easy to install, moisture resistant. All right. Well, people are already asking this question. We get it a lot. Okay. So pretty much I can install it anywhere in my house, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, yeah. laundry room, whatever. So what can I install it on and, and what can I not install it on? Like, could I put this over tile? Uh, yeah, that's great. So again, my answer is going to be, it depends. You can go over tile as long as the tile is solid, adhered properly and level. That's it. Your prep, your surface prep, whatever you're going to lay this over has got to be clean and level. Yes, clean and clean, level. Clean, solid, and level. If you meet those criteria, you can put it over tile. You can put it over existing sheet vinyl. If you had like old sheet vinyl in your kitchen and it's well adhered but just ugly, absolutely. You can go Did right that. over that. Yep. You can put it over concrete subfloor. You can put it over wood subfloor. There's only one thing you cannot put this over. People. Okay, there's two things you cannot put this over, and that is carpet. carpet. Okay. All right, so you cannot put it over any kind of carpet, even if you have that real thin indoor, mm -hmm. outdoor carpet. You can't do that. Um, just because carpet is too flexible. And as you kind of, like we said, you know, as these stick together like this, you want to have a nice flat, solid surface for them to stick together on. And if I have flex underneath, because there's carpet, it's easy for these to come apart. And that is not what you want. Well, you just referred to it as like a, a floating rug, a floating mm -hmm. floor so on top of carpet. Not to mention the fact, if this is waterproof or water resistant, it's gonna seal in some of that moisture and, and that's not good for your home as well. No. Carpet. No. Okay. Right. All right. So, so you're telling me it's easy to install. Yes. What types of tools do I need to do this? Now, there are some specialty tools. One of the things that I really recommend is to pick yourself up a floor installation kit. This has everything you need in it. Now you can see, not a very big box. So there's not a ton of stuff. We're going to go through it. So some of the things that are in there, you're going to need a mallet. Now, I don't suggest you use a regular hammer. I suggest you use either a rubber mallet or one of these that has a plastic edge because you don't want to 
mess up the finish of the floor. And then just as Joe was showing, these will come with a variety of spacers. Spacers are your friend in this installation. You have to allow room at around the perimeter for expansion and contraction. And this is what's gonna ensure that you have the proper spacing between your walls and the new floor that you're gonna put in. And these are actually two different sizes. You have a half inch and a quarter uh, inch. Yeah, so read the instructions. It'll read tell you what, what spacing you need to use. And Super another, a lot of people ask you, do, do I need like a thousand of these or can I reuse these? You can reuse these. You don't need a thousand of them as you get, like you wanna get definitely the wall that you're, you're starting with that mm -hmm. you're gonna keep hammering into, which we'll show. You may wanna let those stick, but then you might need some at the ends and then you can kind of move them as you get like halfway across the room. That first half's really not gonna move very much. Okay. So you can kind of read some of these. Um, but I, you know, for me, these are great peace of mind. <laughs> yes. And they're relatively inexpensive. I would err on the side of having more than less because this is what's gonna keep everything in place yes. until you finish everything off. So kind of up to you. I would buy extras because I like that. Yeah. No, and, 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 and you know as well as I do, anytime you're working on a long wall, the odds of that wall being exactly, you know, 90 degrees from everything else, yeah, it's not going to happen. Definitely. So these spacers keep your floor running the long side, the right, you know. The wall, right. Right, right the wall. Right. All right, uh, there's a couple other things here that I'm seeing. I would explain these things. This is these are your specialty tools. Like I said, not really complex. So what these do, and these also come in that kit, this is gonna allow you to grab the edge of the plank and then hit the tab with the hammer to pull those joints tight. So this would go right on the edge and then you kind of tap it with the hammer to pull it close to the plank next to it. So this is a great specialty tool. You can even see this one, it's got little little padded dots on them to prevent you from scratching up the finish on your floor. And then you also have what is known as a tapping block. And all this does, same thing, allows you to kind of put it on the edge and then go ahead and tap it into place without breaking the edge or marring the surface of your vinyl. So again, super, they are specialized tools mm -hmm but not complex. Specialized. Not complex. Yeah, I got to tell you, so that, that tapping block is great, you know, when you're in the middle of the floor, but once you get next to a wall, you can mm -hmm. get that tapping block in, so you do need that grab bar. You do. Right? And that's why this kit's great, because it's got all that stuff with it, and you can use it over and over again. Right. All right, so we talked to a few things there. Now, is that a breathing apparatus? What, <laughs> what, what is that? Those are knee pads. Oh, now, okay. again, this is, this is <laughs> optional equipment. Now, if you're older like I am and your knees don't always work that great, this is no longer optional equipment. I consider this a necessity. Yes, you will be down on your knees yeah. for long periods of time. So some way to go ahead and protect those knees, really just gonna make the job a lot more comfortable for you. Is it a necessity? No, but it's a lot more comfortable. It is, and, and you just made mention of that. Yes, you are gonna be on your knees a lot in this. That's why we always talk about, you know, you wanna have, make sure you have a great plan, mm -hmm. you wanna have great preparation, you know, and then you just gotta have patience, right? Because mm -hmm. it does take time. And you're gonna be maybe, I don't know, someone like in this room who went halfway through a room and realized um, that they forgot to put in a spacer and their boards were slightly askew. I'm not gonna mention any names. <laughs> But the great thing is I was able to unlock it, go all the way back to the start and start back over. So right. definitely worth it. Now, in speaking of things like that, mm -hmm. where you realize you were a little bit off, another really great tool you're gonna need is that measurement tape. Ah, we yeah. We want yeah. to plan first. Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure we get good measurements of our room, allow for that quarter inch, half inch on either side mm -hmm. so that you don't have you know, you don't wind up with a sliver like this big at the sure. end of the room. You wanna make sure you're balancing out how you lay your boards down. And even lengthwise, you don't wanna end up with a little piece at the very end of a row. You generally don't want to have a section any smaller than six inches. Gotcha. So we're gonna look at that when we go ahead and install in just a couple of minutes. And then the final little piece is that that speed square there, That speed square that's going to just give you a nice straight edge for nice straight cuts 
Uh, ah, cuts, cuts, cuts. Talk to me. How do you how do you cut this stuff? There's a couple of different ways that you can cut this stuff. That's the beautiful thing about it. Easy to cut. The easiest way that speed square, that straight edge, and utility knife. All you need to do is score and snap it. I'm going to show you that when we install it in just a second. But you just want to make sure you have a nice straight edge. Run your utility knife. The biggest thing with this is make sure you have a sharp blade. If this is going to be your chosen method, invest in new blades. You want to keep those blades sharp. Always make sure you're using gloves if you're going to do that as well. Another way to cut it, this is a fantastic investment. It's Best thing I ever bought. Especially if you're going to do a lot. Right? Yes. Now you can get different sizes. This is a smaller one. I know the one that you got was a little bit bigger. Yep. All right. And basically, this is just a laminate cutter. I mean, a, um, a vinyl cutter. And it does, most of your cuts are going to be straight cuts. You may have a couple of angles. And you can see it has the ability for you to do angles on here as well. And it really just kind of works like a giant paper cutter. Yep. Just measure it out. That's it. And it gives you nice, clean, straight edges. And this makes it go so much faster. So much faster. One, one of the things that a lot of people don't understand when it comes to electric vinyl plank flooring, we'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, and so when you cut it, if you cut it with anything other, like a jigsaw or a hacksaw or something, it, there's dust. Mm -hmm. right? there's, there's, there's vinyl dust that pops up. So if you're going to cut anything like that, you want to do it outside. But these products mm -hmm. allow you to cut it inside right as you're installing. And, and no dust. Absolutely, really absolutely no dust. no dust. Very, very little cleanup. Right, and speaking of that last thing, which I just mentioned, jigsaw. This is another, if you have any strange, weird cuts. Let's mm -hmm. say a lot of people want to do this in the bathroom, and they're like, well, do I have to uninstall my toilet? You can, but you don't have to. You can actually draw it out and make a nice, clean cut with a jigsaw, mm -hmm. put it right up to the edge of that toilet. And uh, the only thing you want to make sure you remember with a jigsaw, they do have blades specifically for vinyl. Yes. You want to use a vinyl blade. It'll say right on it. And then you also uh, want to make sure you cut it face up. So sometimes they'll tell you to flip things. And when you're talking luxury vinyl here, you want to cut it face up. And again, if it's going to be something exposed, like around the base of a toilet, take your time. You want to be as precise as possible with those cuts because there's really no way to hide it. Right? Yeah, it yeah. Right. I mean, you can put a little bit of caulk to kind of seal around it, but right. other than that, you don't want big gaps. Right. And like Robin said, if you're using the incorrect blade, it will actually melt the floor. You actually have this burnt edge, and that's unless you're going for that. You know? <laughs> if that's the look you want. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, well, look, I, I think you're going to get ready over there mm -hmm. and show people how to install it. So as Robin is moving over to our demonstration area, let me talk a little bit more about surface prep. Whether you are putting this on top of tile that's level and clean, a subfloor that's level and clean, or concrete that's level and clean, you want to make sure that your surface is well prepared. And what I mean by that, the level piece is probably the hardest part. So you've got little little dents in your concrete floor. Maybe you're installing this in the basement. You've got a little chip out of your concrete floor. Or maybe you're installing this, you've ripped up some carpet, and you're getting ready to install it on your subfloor. A couple of things any tacks that are still in there from the carpet and the, and the padding, they need to be removed. You gotta remove all that. You wanna make sure there's all debris taken care of. If you have any nails that are maybe protruding a little bit from your subfloor, you wanna make sure those are hammered in. And then, unfortunately, a lot of times subfloor might not be completely level. You may have just a little bit of a bow in that subfloor. What you can do is what I had to do, you buy a floor leveling compound, a self-leveling compound. It looks kind of like peanut butter, right? It, you kind of spread it out, but once you spread it out, it kind of runs to the deepest part and levels out. You kind of spread it, you let it dry overnight, and then your floor is level. Trust me, this will go a very long way because if you start installing this floor on an uneven surface, you can see how it bends just like that, and it's going to pop, and you're going to have problems. Probably the number one problem is people do not have a very level and clean floor. So take your time with that. In fact, that's probably going to take you more time than the actual install of the floor itself. Speaking of installation, uh, let's see if we can switch cameras over here and get to our good friend Robin and see what she's ready to show us. All right. So you can see our layout here. 
And you can see, uh, this is just like a wood subfloor. I'm going up against a couple of walls here. So we're gonna kind of show you everything you need to know. Now, the first question that we usually get asked is, do I have to remove, remove my baseboards? Again, it depends. It depends on the look that you are going for. You can install right up to your baseboard with the spacer, but then you're going to need to add something called a shoe molding or a quarter round in order to hide that gap. Now, if you're not interested in doing that, you can go ahead and remove your baseboard. So I'm gonna show you how it looks both ways, leaving a baseboard and removing a baseboard and then putting it back on. Now, the next question that we always get is, where do I start? <laughs> now, a lot of times they'll tell you the far left corner. Overall, it really doesn't matter. You want to work your way out of the room because you don't necessarily want to work your way into a corner. It's just easier to work your way out of a room. And it's generally better to go along the longest wall. Now, that is uh, kind of the rule of thumb. But if for your layout, you're better off going the opposite direction, that's completely up to you. It's not going to affect the installation. Just figure out where you're going to start. Now, you mentioned earlier measuring. You want to make sure that you measure your space and maybe even lay out a couple of planks to make sure that you're not going to have any really small cuts, right? Like you don't want to have a sliver at the end or a teeny tiny piece at the end of a row. You're going to want to adjust accordingly. Now we're going to start here in this corner up here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to start with a full plank. So I'm going to start with a full plank of flooring and I'm going to set my spacers. Now, the one thing you do want to know, and again, read your manufacturer's instructions, but you want this groove end facing out because that's where you're going to stick the tongue of the second piece. So make sure you're set the right way. And I'm going to go quarter inch spacers. So I'm going to go quarter inch against the wall here. I just drop that in. And then I need to go quarter inch up to my baseboards. And I'm just going to go ahead and slide these in so they're nice and tight. Okay. Now, I'm going to go down this one row first. When you read your instructions, sometimes they may tell you to cut off the tongue of your first piece. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It depends on the manufacturer. If you need to do that, really simple. You're just going to set it down. Again, utilize your uh, straight edge, whatever straight edge you have. I've got my utility knife, and I'm just going to go right up against it. You can even see a lot of times they have like a groove in them, and you're just going to want to score it down. This one has a groove, so I don't even really need the straight edge. And then you may have to score it once or twice it on a little piece here. If you're going to do any cutting like this, you want to make sure that you're either on your subfloor or you are on a cutting block. And you'll notice I just I bent it right off. It may take a little bit of doing to get this through. But all you do is cut that edge off. Now, not all manufacturers are going to have you do that, but if you do, that's what it means. So we went ahead and took care of that. Now, we're going to look at our second piece right here. That would be the piece that would go down here. Now, if I have a wall right here, I can't lock in my second piece and then bring it down because I'm going to have a wall at this end. So in order to measure the distance, between the end and the wall, I'm going to turn my piece around, put it right up within that quarter of an inch. Make sure you have your spacer correct. Line it up. And I'm going to mark where to cut it. Now, I'm just using a china pencil right here. I'm going to mark that right there.
I can cut this a number of ways. I could either go ahead and draw a straight edge, a straight line right across there at my mark. Now again, I'm using a china pencil or a grease pencil. This will wipe right off. Or I can just make that little mark and use my cutter. Now I am going to use my cutter here. Make sure everything's out of the way. Get that nice clean edge. Line it up. And it's just that easy. Nice, clean, straight cut. Don't get rid of this piece. I'm going to show you why in just a second. Now I'm going to come back. And remember, these are locks. So I'm going to put it in at an angle. And then I'm just going to drop it into place. If this seam was not quite closed all the way, and again, if we were up against the wall, I would use my pry bar, put it right at the end, grab my hammer, and tap it into place to ensure that this seam was closed nice and tight. Now remember, we had said, don't throw this piece out. And the reason for that is you don't ever want your seams this way, the short edge seams, you don't ever want those to line up. You always want to stagger those seams. Again, when you read your manufacturer's instructions, it's going to tell you sometimes they'll say, you know, over six inches. Sometimes they'll say half a plank. When you have things like this that are left over, this is a great way to start your second row to ensure your seams are going to get staggered. So I'm going to take this little piece, and this is going to start my second row. I'm going to put in my spacer up against the wall to make sure. And now I'm going to angle it right into the, the groove and drop it down. You can see I'm a little far out here. I didn't get it all the way to the end, but that's okay because I have my little pry bar. Put that right there. And I could just go ahead and tap it right back to where it needs to go. And now I'm ready for my second piece. Now, again, I only need my spacers around the perimeter. I don't need anything because I have this spacer here that's going to keep it against the wall. So now I'm going to grab my next piece. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my tongue edge. Cut her out of the way for a sec. And all I have to do is line it up. And drop it into place. Now you see that's there's a gap there where my block comes in. I put my block on the end. Come on. And I'm just gonna hammer this down until that seam is closed. And I've got a nice, solid, tight seam between those boards right there. I can always take it this way. If it looks like it's a little bit loose, you just go ahead, knock them together, and it, it is a big, giant puzzle. Now I've got these pieces in. I would do the same thing down here, measure out this end since it is up against the wall. You turn the board around, drop it into place, make your mark on it. And this one, just so I could show you how easy it is to do it with a knife, I'm going to go ahead and do it with my knife. So I'm going to draw my line. And all I have to do is run my blade. This is why it's so important to have a sharp blade. Just run my blade once or twice across the surface and snap. That's it. Score and snap.
and it comes right apart. Now this is my last little piece here. It was over six inches, so I'm good. Go ahead. Put it into place. Again, because I'm on a wall here, I'm going to use my pry bar. Tap it back. To get that nice, tight seam. And again, I can start my next row with this leftover piece. That's the beauty of all of this. I'm going to go ahead and drop my next one in. Again, make sure I have my spacer up at the top. And I just keep going. As long as I need to, I just go ahead and keep going. I can tap them into place, make sure that they all fit well, and that my seams are nice and tight. Drop another one right in here. how it goes. So that's down. I'm up against the wall, so I'm going to use this guy. Tap it in this place. Come on. And again, if it's a little too far, it didn't quite hit right, I can lift it up and I can move it back into place. And then I can go ahead and knock it into place. Still hitting him. That's it. You just want to keep knocking until you get a nice tight joint. And then I'll put in one more, start the next one with a full piece. And I think we kind of have the general idea. We don't need a ton of spacers in terms of, you know, one at the end of each plank is usually enough, especially if you're using a thinner plank like this. If you use some of the wider planks, um, you may want two at the end just to keep them even. But that's pretty much it. You're going to keep going along. Now you'll notice none of my short seams line up. This is a short seam. This is a short seam. This is a short seam. So there's always at least six inches between any of those short seams. And that's what's going to give you stability and make sure that this isn't going to come apart in the long run. Now, once you're done laying everything, we get down to finishing. What do we do? The entire floor is laid. At this point, we could go ahead and take out our spacers. Go ahead, they're not attached in any way, they just pop right out. And then you're gonna have to finish your edge. Now, if you took off your baseboard, all you're gonna need to do is go ahead and reattach it. Put it right back. Now, you can reutilize the same baseboard, take it off, label it on the back of where it goes, and then you would just go ahead and nail that right back into place. It can sit on top of the vinyl here. You don't need a space up and down for that. You just need the space against the wall. And that goes ahead and covers that seam beautifully. Now, if you chose not to remove your baseboard, you still have a gap right here. And that's where your shoe molding or quarter round comes into play. You can tell a quarter round because it looks like a quarter of a pie. And you would just measure it off, set it into place, and you can go ahead and nail that right into your baseboard. 
And that goes ahead and covers that edge so that you no longer have an unfinished edge. Like I do. That covers your gap for you. And that's it. That's all you have to do to lay your luxury vinyl. Robin, that was a, a lot of great information. As Robin's coming over here to, to rejoin me here in just a second, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about now you spend all this time and effort to put that floor together. And you can tell, Robin, you had to have patience, right? <laughs> yes. So, so sometimes those themes just don't click into place all the time. You've got to use a little, little bit of you know, patience with it. A little, little bit of elbow grease. A little bit of elbow grease. <laughs> but, man, I'll tell you what, that looks amazing. It looks mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. So you've done all this work. How do you maintain something like that? Do you need special cleaners? Do you use some old mopping glow or something <laughs> on it? How do you keep it clean? You know what? Um, if you're really set on utilizing a cleaner, I would use one that is specific for vinyl floors. So here you have yeah. something. This is your life proof hardcore cleaner. It's designed to use on a vinyl floor. You can utilize this. But honestly, mop with warm water. All you need. You don't need a cleaner on it. Um, many of these, again, read your manufacturer's instructions. Mm -hmm. If you have a floor steamer, you know, mm -hmm. with like the microfiber oh, pads, yeah. works beautifully on these because they are water uh, waterproof, water resistant. So you don't have to worry like you do with a wood floor or a laminate floor that you're going to put too much moisture on it. So you can use a nice steam cleaner if that's what you like in order to you know, get rid of some of the germs maybe. Yeah, sure. um, but you don't need a lot. That's the beautiful thing. There's not a lot of maintenance to this. Yeah, it, since when that when it when it resists moisture like that, everything kind of sits on top of it. And I got to tell you, with seven dogs, there's been a lot of stuff left on my floors, mm -hmm. <laughs> and just a little wet mop has taken care of a lot of that. So mm -hmm. very easy to install. Mm -hmm. Again, just have a little patience, a little bit of practice. Love how you were able to do all the different cuts with that. There's one more thing I do want to talk about sure. because I know we get a question oh, all yeah. the time. Yeah, I know what's and coming. That is, what do I do if I'm transitioning between home? Yes. Yeah. How do I handle that? And you know what? There's a couple of different things that you can do to transition between homes. Right? The first thing that you can do now, if you're going to go and then just stop, all right? Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, you're going to do your hallway, but your, car your bedrooms are still carpeted. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go into the bedroom and you need to have a transition right there. You can actually get transition pieces just like that. You can see the profile. It'll go over the uh, laminate and then right up to that carpet. It takes yep. care of the difference in thickness or size between the carpet and others. So there's different transitions. You can also utilize transitions. Now this is this is a what they call a reducer, mm -hmm. right? That's why it's two different sizes. Or you can have a standard T transition like that. All right, where it's equal levels, this works great if you're gonna change direction. Mm -hmm. So in my house, I have some of my rooms going this way, but then when you pass into the kitchen, the remainder of the rooms run this way. So I needed a transition. Same height flooring, same flooring, I just use a T transition like this to kind of cover that seam if we're changing direction in the flooring. So that's another way you can go about it. And I know this uh, for a fact as well, if you say maybe have like sliding glass doors, mm -hmm. something like that, you wanna run up there, then you would use something like this. You'd mm -hmm. actually kind of use this. So it would actually hold the floor in place, right. but provide a transition to your a mirror or something like that. Sure. Now we'll get this slide. I know we've got one over here. Mm -hmm. um, I ran mine to the top of stairs. Mm. Um, so how do you get to, what do you get to when the top of stairs? Well, guess what? It's, a, it's another type of transition piece. It's actually called a stair cap or end mm -hmm. cap. We're running right up to the top of stairs. Now, which also, we've had a few questions about this. Can I put this on stairs? Mm. So they do actually sell what they call Kappa tread, which is actually a whole stair tread that's mm. designed to go right over your stairs. Um, they're beautiful. You can usually find them in the exact same finish mm. of your vinyl. They're expensive. They are expensive, yes. <laughs> they, they are expensive, but they will match. Um, that is really the only way you should put them 
on your stairs. If it's designed, for that. yeah, yeah. If it's well, designed for that. But Robin said this is this is this is a a floating floor, mm -hmm. and a stair is only going to have maybe one and a half of these, and it's not mm -hmm. no way to kind of keep it on there. Right, yeah. it's, it's too solid. So I know yeah. in my house when we took up our carpet, uh, we had done you know vinyl in the whole lower part of the house. We took the carpet off the stairs because. It was nasty. Yes. Um, and actually, I talked to a contractor to do that mm -hmm. for us. And we just replaced the treads on the stairs mm -hmm. with brand new oak treads. It's actually cheaper yes. than the caps. And we stained them to that. So that was going to say this. <laughs> the great thing about this stuff is if you get any type of life proof or many times you can actually find the stain that matches. Right. You really can. Mm -hmm. And with those oak, you guess what? You got the wood grain. That's what we did too. Mm -hmm. Stain the steps, you know, paint it. You know, it looks Phenomenal. Right. Just did the phenomenal. risers, a nice bright white. Exactly. Nice wood tops. And it turned out beautifully. Yeah. So, yeah, that's definitely it. The other question that I get, and you know what? I'm going to have you flip me back over sure, to this yeah. camera. The other question that we get all the time is, well, what happens if I come up to a door jam like this? How do I take care of getting the vinyl? Now, in this particular case, we went straight up to it. But in a lot of times, if you're going to transition into a room, you kind of want to go over or go underneath this door casing right here. And there is a way to do that. Really, really simple. And it's by utilizing what is known as an undercut or a flush saw. Now, you can see it's offset. What you would do is you would take a scrap of your flooring. So it's the exact same height. You only need a scrap. You just need a little piece. Like I have this piece right here. Just a, a little, this is what we call our sacrificial piece. And you'll set it right up to the edge. It doesn't have to line up. If it goes on an angle, it doesn't matter because all you're looking for is the height. That's all you care about. And you just run your saw right along the edge of this scrap piece and it will cut, undercut this piece of casing. You'll pop out that little piece and that flooring will slide right underneath it beautifully. So that is another specialty tool you may want to get. These are relatively inexpensive because they are hand tools. But like I said, what we're looking for is either it's called a back saw or a flush mount saw or an undercut saw. It goes by all of those names. It's all the same thing. So another great piece of advice from Robin. I told you I learned something from her new every single time we do these workshops. And we learned a lot today. We covered absolutely a lot. You know, Robin told us why this LVP, LVT may be the right choice for you. I know it is for us. Yes. Um, we're, 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 we're sold on it. <laughs> we use it a lot. Uh, we talked a lot about surface preps. Mm. What would you say, Robin? It's got to be what? <laughs> Clean, level, and solid. Those are your big ones. Clean, yes. level, and solid. Yes, don't <laughs> install it over people or carpet. No, no people okay. or carpet. Right. <laughs> um, different types of installations. We really feel that this click lock, this is the best way for a beginning DIY. It allows you to make mistakes and fix them. As you saw, Robin, you know, a couple of times she had to maneuver it around, but man, mm -hmm. what, a, what a fantastic finished product. Um, we, we talked about some of the other different types of installations as well. Maybe why this might be the right one for you. And then, well, she showed you how easy it is to do it, right? This is completely live. She's doing this, you know, and just looks fantastic. What I love about Robin is, Robin's not gonna, like, as soon as we get off camera here, she's gonna, she's gonna finish the floor. <laughs> She's not just going to let it stay unfinished. I can't leave it unfinished. Okay, no. So, so uh, on behalf of Robin, my dear friend, myself, our entire Homeowner 101 team, and the Home Depot, thank you so much for joining us, folks. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.